I guess we all have things that take us back in time. For some, it's a certain smell that reminds them of that time they took a trip. For others, it's food that their parents used to make when they weren't feeling so well. And for some, it's video games. And I'm one of those people. I remember when my parents would buy me a video game and I would keep replaying it for weeks or even months. One of those games is Land of the Dead Road to Fiddler's Green. The game is nothing special. It's your typical zombie shooter from 2005, but it holds a special place in my heart. Technically, it's a prequel to the original Land of the Dead movie, but uh, <laughs> they have nothing in common. In this game, you play as a farmer named Jack, this guy. So one day, while Jack was having dinner, the electricity went out and he noticed a stranger standing in his yard. So, one, two, three, four, oh, okay, number four, I'll remember that. After running out of ammo, you have to do another lap around the house and get into your basement where this guy is already waiting for you. Like, I have no idea how he got there and noticed, but whatever. Get the key, get into the shed, take a gun, take out the zombies, done. And now, um, uh, get ready for the best cutscene in your life. I killed the strangers. It was them or me. The poor devils looked like they fell in a septic tank and festered for a few days. I'd never killed no one before, so I sure was real spooked. I decided to head over to my neighbors across the cornfield. I just didn't feel safe hanging around here all by myself. So let me get this straight. After dealing with a lot of zombies, barely surviving, his best idea is to go to his neighbors through a cornfield at night? Y yeah great idea, why not Mr. Nerves of Steel? But chokes aside, this level seemed really scary when I was a kid, but now... Where am I? Where am I? I have no idea where I am. The level wasn't hard. You need to navigate through the cornfield, find the barn, which is locked, find the bolt cutter, get into the barn, but... The reason I liked this game so much was these real-time radio broadcasts that are just quite creepy. We are interrupting our normal broadcast to bring you this important bulletin. We are getting disconcerting reports of mass murder from all over the state. Details were sketchy at this time. Although there was no official statement from law enforcement officials, the police chief has speculated that rival gangs may be involved. And I've just been told that we are going to go live to news correspondent Amanda Rogers, who is on site at the Deacon Center Mall. Hello, Amanda. Can you tell us what's going on there? Amanda? Hello? Well, it looks like we're having some technical difficulty getting in touch with Amanda. We'll try again momentarily. This is obviously some very disturbing news, and we will be staying with this story all day long. The same thing happens when you reach the quiet, messy neighbor's house, but this time it's a TV broadcast. And you know what? These little cutscenes really take me back in time. When I was a kid playing this game, they looked so real and the acting seemed so believable. Ah, the good old times. Anyway, we have to clean the house and take out all the zombies in the area. After that, Jack goes back home where he is going to stay for quite some time. I did what the man on the TV said and stayed on the farm as long as I could. I got by okay, but those corpses kept coming. The shortwave radio said that the military had some safe houses set up in the city. I was running low on supplies and starting to go crazy all by myself. I had nothing to lose. The city looked like a war zone. Roads everywhere were blocked. I didn't know where to go until I noticed a flicking light in the hospital up ahead. Someone was signaling SOS. I wasn't gonna let a few blocked roads stop me from getting to another living person. I'd go on foot. This is where you can get the general feeling of the game. Looking at it today, it's pretty linear. You're given a quote-unquote corridor to go through while fighting zombies, but sometimes they can surprise you, because I know they surprised me back in the day. Hey. Oh, <laughs> hello there. I forgot about you. After getting to the hospital, it turns out that the genius doctor locked himself in the room and now he cannot open it himself. Obviously, I had to help him out because, well, linear. I had to clear floor after floor and I noticed a new kind of zombies, the crawling ones. The heck are you doing down there? But this is fun. A new variation of zombies is always a good thing. It keeps the game from becoming boring. Also, I found a Glock just casually laying on an operating table. <laughs> America. Anyway, 
I had to go room to room like a door salesman, but in this case, I wasn't selling cars extended warranty. No, 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 no. I was looking for a keycard to open the door to the basement. In yet another basement, I had to flick the switch to open the door to the doctor, but, um, <laughs> ready for an unexpected twist? He was infected and now he's a zombie. Also the whole billion man kaboom. More shooty shooty and more zombies was sure fun, but I had to get out of there fast. So to escape from the burning hospital, I had to heat myself from one balcony onto another balcony of the nearby building. Okay, I'm actually afraid of heights, so... I made it out of the hospital, but I still wasn't safe. There was a police station nearby. I figured I could get me some serious firepower there. Good idea, right? Well, more corridors and more shooty shooty later, a new variation of zombies was introduced. And I kid you not, this one just pukes to deal damage. Oh, right, I forgot that you can do that. Okay. By the way, when I was playing this game as a kid, I didn't understand it, but there's apparently a reference to the 28 Days Later movie with a couple in bed. I don't know if I can show it, but if you know, you know. So, my way to the police station was through the apartment building where I had to... Okay, once again. <laughs> okay, I'll stop, just, there's too much parkour for one level. Anyway, when I got to the police station, all the doors were either locked or dead ends. So I had to go outside to enter through the main entrance. But there's a catch. The path was blocked by a gate that I had to open by flickering the switch. I ended up in a garage where the circuit was blown and I had to find a fuse. How original. The police station had a lot of guns, obviously. But taking any of the guns triggers an alarm. By the way, there's an area in the police station where you can just shoot zombies like it's some kind of a shooting range. I was almost ready to leave the station when I ran into another survivor locked up in a cell for... whatever reason. His name was Otis. He said the police station was a safe house until it got overrun a couple of days ago. But he wouldn't tell me why they locked him up. Criminal or not, I couldn't just leave him there. I had to find a key to his cell. Yeah, as you may have guessed, this section of the game features a ton of interesting gameplay. Running around, shooting zombies. Running around, shooting zombies. Well, at least we have another human being and he is not going anywhere anytime soon. Foreshadowing. Otis was ready to run to the truck. I didn't have many bullets in the sniper rifle, so I had to be careful. I couldn't let a single one of them get to him. And covering him I did. Honestly, this part of the game was a little bit hard for me as a kid because of how stupid our friend is. Are you gonna do anything? We're just gonna stand there. Oh, okay, now he's shooting, but he's shooting in the wrong direction. Okay, that, that's something. That's, oh, wait, hell no. Okay, alright. So, Otis got in his truck and out of here. Great. But before he left though, he yells something about the theater, so obviously this is where you're going. The streets are full of zombies, so it's not safe, so you have to go through the sewers. The sewers part was uneventful. Well, except for a few unintentional jump scares. And you actually get to swim in this part of the game, which is pretty cool. The theater was barricaded like a fortress, but everyone was dead, so guess we had to play Visceroid cleanup again. So, after clearing the theater, I could finally rest before moving on. I woke up to honking. Otis came back for me. I asked Otis where we were going. A trucker on his CB radio told him about a city of the living, completely surrounded by water and walled off from those creatures. We had to find a way there. Our best bet was to go by boat. We headed for the docks. Freedom was in sight. Otis would go down and find a boat while I covered him. Now, this City of the Living is the direct reference to the City of the Living from the original movie Land of the Dead, but the boat part is completely made up. After cover notice once again, we started looking at different boats to see which one was working. And uh, it was the last one we checked, of course it had to be. Anyway, to get out I had to restart the generator, which was pretty easy, but bada bim bada boom and Otis was now infected. Alone, yet again. By the time I reached the City of the Living, I saw a bunch of survivors trying to get a truck across the drawbridge, and this level brings so many memories. Like, back in the day, it took me quite a few attempts to actually get past this level, and even today it was 
a bit hard because of the aiming system, which is not the best. Am I even hitting them? Well, I can't really freaking tell. Well, looks like I am. So anyway, the last mission was more of a tutorial on how to get an apartment in a skyscraper. Boom! Ooh. Bam! Oh, bop! Oh! And that's it. That's the end of the game. Although they show a little cutscene at the end where a zombie takes a sledgehammer, hammer, hammer, bleh, takes a sledgehammer and slams down one of the walls. But uh, not our problem. So yeah, I know it's not a perfect game, but sometimes it's the imperfect stuff that makes things perfect. I'm glad that I had a chance to play this game as a kid and that I managed to find it today. It was a lot of fun. And before you click off this video. I'd like to say thank you for watching and it would mean a world to me if you could check out my latest song via the link in the pinned comment or in the description. Okay, thank you. Bye!